Hey guys, welcome to part four of our on the job site landscape design. If you recall, and if you haven't seen it, check out part three for the front yard design. What I've done here is the backyard. And because of time and, you know, just video would have been too long, we broke the design into two weeks. So I hope you get a chance to look at part one, two, and three, so you know what you're looking at here as compared to the original before type of stuff. So in looking at this, I decided from a DIY perspective to kick it up a notch or two. As you can see from part three, the detail and the intricacy and the amount of information contained on the design has kind of increased. And when I say that, not only do we have the idea that is going on in this yard, but also the explanation so that a DIYer like yourself would be able to take this plan and not only understand it yourself, but also turn it over to a, a contractor or turn it over to a, um, a cement guy. And they would be able to say, oh, okay, I see what you got here. You got, you have the walkways that are needed here. You got the new pad over here and you got an edging over here. Okay, good. All right. I can estimate from that. It's also has to be able to stand up by itself. You know, you can't, you can't have just the design without some notes and explanation behind it because designs to a non, uh, non-professional, a layman, a lay person, they're going to generate questions from looking at things. Now, yes, the design can, they can stand on itself if you take a few minutes and digest it. But later in this video, I'm going to go over the designer notes and instructions so that the written word also supports the visual, the visual picture that's going on here. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of these things. And as we do this again, Maestro is going to show you the, the angles and stuff that we're talking about as we go. So coming from the front yard, you notice that I have a lot of planting or structural detail explanation drawn out so that this DIY client can look at it and go, what do you mean I have to put an arbor in? What is an arbor? What is a gated arbor, etc." Well, they'll be able to look at it and get a very good idea on exactly how to build it. You know, the detail shows, you know, okay, four by four by 10 posts, two feet in the ground, concreted around, gates are three feet a piece, and then the top arbor with two by sixes and two by fours on end. There you go, there's your arbor. But coming in through here, coming in, we've decided to make a sustainable corner over here. This is gonna be the veggie, berry, fruit tree corner over here, big, aluminum stock tanks that are going to be the, the main gardens and then two foot diameter pots for uh, blueberries or genetic dwarf fruit tree and then espaliered, espaliered berries along the, the fence line for blackberry, boysenberry, um, even raspberries for, for that type of uh, sustainable corner, something they can harvest every year. Now, traversing through that gate and coming down in here, we now have a durable concrete decomposed granite um, stepping stone type of walkway, something durable where you're not walking on wet grass or mud or anything else. And that connects to the front yard, which also had another walkway that came all the way from the front porch area. We have a connecting walkway that goes from this walkway over to the pallet deck, the pallet deck that the customer wants to build for themselves. And this thing is 16 by 24. And in the center of it is a mortared in reclaimed brick, fire brick, uh, fire pit there. So I'm also suggesting a graded cover over the top of it so they could use it for uh, cooking. They could use it for, um, protection from a sand base for cats getting in there, etc. 
and then the, the drainage issues are addressed. This is the lower part of the deck. So you'll have this at soil grade. This will be excavated down about six inches and then layered with fabric and gravel just below the threshold to the she shed, which is in here. It'll have some internal storage inside the she shed for various things. And then one of the big changes I'm suggesting is that old dilapidated non-functional shed that they have there, have that removed and bring in a new portable shed placed on mounts of the same dimension as the she shed, about 12 by 12, <clears throat> a nice four foot gore door, maybe with a couple of shelves inside. And my whole reasoning behind that is to clear out this garage. This garage is nothing but house storage right now, and you can hardly navigate through it. So a lot of the clutter and the storage that's in here can get relocated and organized and thinned out and placed in here. Why? My whole, my whole purpose behind that is because Common sense dictates that you don't walk through someone's master bedroom to get out to the backyard. The owner can leave their master bedroom and go out, can go out into the backyard, but visitors and family and stuff, this master bedroom is not a thoroughfare. They can come down the hallway and through the garage and out into the yard if they want to. That is a traffic flow that makes so much more sense. Now, another aspect of this was drainage. A lot of the water uh, from rain and snow load really created a very wet area right here in front of the shed. And if you recall all the diggings from Doggo down there, so we're going to have to address that. And the way I did is having three pit drains dug and have grade tapered towards this. The pit drains will be lined with fabric at the bottom, gravel filled, and then fabric underneath all of this pallet area. And then this lower deck area will be about a half inch below threshold. I also suggested over on this side, depending on which way the ridge line for this new shed goes in. If it matches the ridge line of the original, these will not be needed. If the ridge line is different than the she shed, then a pit drain over on this side as well. Okay, another aspect, remember designs are supposed to be futuristic and also problem solving. So a lot of the issues that the client has regarding various aspects are solved with this design. And let me address one of those right now. One of the biggest concerns the clients have is visitors and visitors and their dog, the interaction. Their dog is uh, kind of a nervous Nelly and doesn't really know how to deal with strangers other than the immediate family within the home. I'm a, I'm a personal experience of this. And they said, we wanna have a dog area where dog can be and people can be. And that's what I've addressed here. So from the corner of the garage, down to the corner of the new shed. We have a new matching solid fence here with a gated arbor area here and a gated arbor area down here. So if company is here, this area can be closed off and enjoyed by the folks without having to interact with the dog and vice versa. In addition to that, we've also created a solid fence line right by the master bedroom covered patio and an extension of that patio to match the garage apron. And this fence with a gate will enclose this side run here. And this, when people are at work, this area will be for doggo all the way and out into this large gravel area here. Now he can run and have the run of the place all through here with no, no interaction and no destruction of the new investment. And I think that's gonna be a big uh, piece of mind for them, I really do. So, planting plan. 
planting plan and underground utility stuff. Let's start with the second first. This shed and this shed both have to get electricity to them. We're probably going to pull from an existing box right here outside the, the second bedroom or a box that's on the garage wall. And we'll go underneath ground and down to here. We'll put the trench and the conduit and everything down to code and we can we can energize these two buildings so we can have use down here. In addition, we'll have water down here in the form of a hose bib. You could even bring water in here if it was desired. So we have that. We have hose bibs that have been placed right by the new valve assembly in the container garden, down by the shed, and also by the dog run. Remember, this whole backyard does not have one hose bib anywhere. The only hose bib is the main faucet right inside the front yard here. And between the front yard valves and other hose bibs and these, it is going to make this much, much easier to deal with a yard on a daily basis. You're not having to drag, you know, 100 or 100 foot plus hoses and trying to water things. It's going to make things a lot easier. So the irrigation valve assembly, we have another five valve assembly here with a shutoff and a winter blowout port. The lawn area will have two valves serving it. And then the beds will have their own drip system. This will be on one, this will be on one, and the container garden will be on one. And all of this is for three and a half season service. When we get to Thanksgiving or the first sign of a hard, hard freeze, then this system gets blown out, including, including the hose bibs. They will be non-functional during the winter time. So that is, we have stepping stones in and around the valve assembly and the hose bib next to the house for ease of uh, stepping in and around in service. We have transformers and timers, transformers for the suggested lighting locations indicated in L and UL along there for good nighttime ambiance, landscape security, and ease of navigation. Now the planting plan. The planting plan somewhat replicates the front yard for ease of maintenance, consistency in care, and also aesthetic looks. So we have Blue Point Juniper Hedge going right along the fence, which is gonna get above that six foot fence, probably about four feet or so, provide some privacy, provide a little bit of windbreak, but also a beautiful tapestry to cover up the fence and to soften all of that west side, including the east side fence here, more Blue Point Juniper there. We have Bow Hall Maples coming up, fast growers, going to grow up to be about 25 to 30 feet and provide some shade. Bow halls are not really wide, so they're not going to be really, really huge for this backyard. But it will provide a great vertical relief visually and also some shade in the summertime. Speaking of shade, this yard gets hot in the summer. And right now, there is no shade relief anywhere in this landscape at all. So I have suggested that they connect and have built a cabled outdoor rated canvas cover that can be pulled on cables from the she shed out across, out across in three paneled sections. And then those cables, you can retract the canvas as needed, especially if like you're using the fire pit or it's a spring day and you want all the sun you can get. These guys can be pulled back and tied off at the roof line. And then during the, the inclement winters and wet springs, you can literally take them off and then store them inside the she shed storage area and bring them back out when it's nice. I think that's going to look really, really good, especially if they get the right color combination. So planting detail, planting detail, Structural detail is explained in much more uh, intimate description in this backyard. I told you about the gated arbors. This one 
is for this guy down here. Six foot wide, two three foot double gates. This one down here will have a single gate. This one over here will have a single gate. And the detail on how to build it and how it looks is right there. Down here, the fence detail for the dog run enclosure is right here. So they can look at it and get a good idea of how it is going to be built. The pit drains, the pit drain detail is down here. So a pit drain, oftentimes a layman doesn't even know what a pit drain is. So I've drawn this out and labeled things that are going to be necessary. 30 inch deep pit drain hole, 18 inches, 18 to 24 inches wide, fabric down at the bottom, fabric on the top, and then the lower pallet deck, this right here, sits on top, about a half inch below threshold. So there you go, it's a, it's a picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. So the planting detail over here, if you want to know the correct way to plant the plants that you're buying, here we have it here. A hole that's half again as wide as the root ball itself. Just a little bit deeper than the root ball is. And then a 50-50 mix of original soil and then compost or whatever planting medium you're going to use. And then fertilizer and then your drip irrigation coming in to each with a water basin around it. So a good DIY visual. Then we have the legend up at the top for all the icons that are listed through here. We have gravel and transformer, irrigation timer, etc. all the way down here. So when they go, what does SS mean? They know they can come up here and go, oh, stepping stones. Okay, makes sense. What is G? G is gravel, okay? So here you have something that stands on its own and is able to make the statement visually now as the drawer or designer that drew this i know it inside and out i know it in my sleep because i spent time on it but someone who would take a look at it the very first time they'd go oh my god what 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 is all this stuff and they'd really have to look at it for quite a long time a good 30 minutes or more to pick up on all the the writing the the layout the orient themselves from, okay, this is the gate coming, this is the she shed, this is the new shed, etc. And like all good designs, you always have a, a compass direction with a rosetta somewhere on the design. So we know if north is pointing in, in this direction, well, we know that we have a, a southern, a southern southeast and southwest exposure here, which just, you know, screams full sun, full sun 12 months out of the year until some of the trees grow up and start throwing a little bit of a shade shadow. You notice I don't have any trees over in this area because vegetable gardens and container gardens should also be in full sun as much as possible throughout all seasons, but particularly the growing season. All right, let's stop about this right now. If you have questions, if you have ideas that said, hey, coach, you should have put in or you could have done or, or what abouts, please drop them in the comments below or shoot me an email. We always have the email available to anybody who doesn't want to do a public type of comment or a public question. Let's talk about designer notes and instructions. So as a professional landscape designer, I always had a, a legend and I always had a section both either attached to the design, which was more the case, or separate. In this particular case, we're doing a separate designer notes and instructions. And this thing is pretty detailed. I know that the, the skill set and landscape prowess of my clients here uh, is just above the beginner level. So I need to give them as much instruction as possible. And if you're doing this, or better yet, if you're ever paying to have it done, this is what you should expect. You should expect a lot of detail, a lot of bang for your designer buck. And if I was to do this right here, and with all the designer note, this is about $600. $600 for the backyard and probably $400 for the front yard. So you have a $1,000 investment. 
but that thousand dollars should be able to save you 10 times that if you're going to do it yourself because if you turn around and farm this out to a landscape contractor who has a small crew and all the mechanized ability to come in and do this for you I guesstimated that this front yard and backyard landscape project, taking it from where it's at now to a finished product, is probably in the high five digit cost. High five digits. That's pretty expensive. That's a big chunk of change. But them doing it themselves, they're probably gonna save in the neighborhoods of surely 50%, but more likely 60 to 65% doing it themselves. So the designer notes and instructions, as you can see, I've labeled out stuff like, what is the current condition of the, of the site? What, what is it, what state is it in right now? I always put in my designer notes to, you know, always call before you dig. So call that 811 number and have them locate where your utilities are coming underground onto the property, cable, water, gas, whatever it might be. And then the suggested design improvements, okay? Um, I always say based on discussions that I've had. And then demolition, we always start with demolition. In this case, it's going to be spraying and sod cutting out weeds and, and existing grass that has kind of fallen to the wayside. And then also, um, there was there's some big stumps in here. There's two big stumps right here and a very large stump over in this corner. And I'm reminding them in the designer notes and instructions, make sure you have those ground out. Make sure you have them ground out below grade and get as much of those lateral roots that go from the stump as well. And then take the grindings. Those grindings do nothing for a new landscape. They will only rob the ground of nitrogen and things do not grow well over ground up stump areas. So underground work, irrigation and electric. I'm suggesting conduit be placed at code and run from a particular location. And then the irrigation source. Remember our irrigation source is up here in the front yard and we have to tap into that both for front yard landscaping and the backyard landscaping. I'm talking about soil mending using the remaining compost from the front yard project, or basically about six or eight cubic yards to broadcast evenly three inches or so with enough left over for planting, and then rototill the whole area, not just part of the area, not just the planting bits, the whole area. And if you check out the ebook and the course, I'll tell you why you rototill everything. And then suggesting some balanced fertilizer and some ironite in there for, for good soil nutrition. And then grading. I'm talking about the grading that, and excavation that's going to have to happen here in front of the sheds as well as other areas. So this is how detailed it gets. We talk about drainage. This particular house does not have gutters. It does not have downspouts. But I'm suggesting that in the future, you know, you could you could attach some underground, underground drainage area and daylight it out into the yard, like into the lawn or into the planter bed or something, instead of having it come off the eaves and go directly into and right next to the foundation. The decking, we talk about the decking out here. Remember, this is a pallet deck and the client has sourced out for like $5 a piece, some good quality solid top decking. And I'm suggesting how to, how to do the lower, how to do the upper, how to secure them to each other, and then doing a rim joist around everything to prevent critters from getting underneath. And then also the posts and stuff around the deck for the canvas and cable system. We talk about optional lighting in here where transformers and cabling can go, making sure that you put cabling inside your irrigation trenches and stuff and then make sure they're daylighted up to the location that's indicated on the design. Very, very simple. But if you don't know it, then you don't know it. This way you know it. We talk about walkways. I'm hoping they do concrete, but if they don't, they're gonna find that 
If you do it in stepping stones, you're going to have to cut stepping stones. If you do it in, in a concrete block, it's going to be more expensive than concrete. So their decision as far as uh, what they're going to use as far as. The fencing, we've talked about the fencing and I've talked about the reasons for the new fence area, um, mainly to keep dog where dog goes and people where people go. We talked about the shed area. This new shed listed here in the design is after an old, very small, very useless shed that is there now. That would be removed and a new portable shed would be brought in, which has the same width as the larger shed, about 12 by 12, again, for storage relocation. Stuff here goes in here. Then a few things, maybe even a car could go inside there with a couple things up at the front for, you know, household utility stuff, storage on the wall. But that navigational, not through the master bedroom, through the garage. We talked about the shade cover for the deck, canvas on cable. We talked about the container, the container planting area up in there, exactly what they need to do, exactly what is over in the area, like another hose bib, drip lines that come up through the bottom of the containers, drainage for each one so they have good drainage, gravel bottoms, fabric over that, and then soil to fill it up. Basically gives you a roadmap to landscape success. It really does. It's a plan. You wouldn't build a house without drawings. Why would you do your yard in the same fashion? We talk about the planting plan. We talked about some of the perennials. We talk about the detail of how to plant each plant. We talked about the fire pit right here in the front of the deck or in the middle of the deck. And that's mortared bricked in for fire safety because you do have a wooden deck. So a mortared system and then have the walls of that fire pit come up about 12 to 18 inches above the deck. And final thoughts. You know, my final thoughts are politically correct being, you know, it's a large undertaking. If you start it, don't stop it. You know, I'm always available for a consult. Uh, I did make one suggestion and that is this large hinged back gate that empties out onto the alleyway. The post that is supporting this is sadly, sadly under, undersized. And this gate is very, very unstable. So I just suggested, you know, hey, you might wanna, you might wanna redo that particular post for long-term success. And then I also suggested, and I closed off saying, hey, late spring and fall, the best time to do something like this for plant success anyway. So that is our design series. Please go back and check out part one, two for where this is and what the site looks like. Check out number three for the front yard design on paper. And here you've joined me for part number four on how to draw this thing up. In part three, I'll have to remind you, is how we go from a blank piece of paper to a plot plan to elements being introduced and then a finished product. I didn't go step by step into here because I just covered it in part three. So go check that out. I'm glad you've stuck with me this long. If you really, really are interested in weekly learning on how to do this stuff yourself, man, hit that subscribe button. Give me a like on this and drop a comment below. It really encourages, really encourages channel growth and exchanging of ideas. Don't forget the website, youryardcoach.com, for a great, uber detailed ebook that I have for sale, as well as a fantastic, inexpensive digital course that you can take, which will teach you how to do not only designing, but all the installation as well. Guys, thank you. As always, to your landscape success, I'll see you next week on the podcast and here on YouTube. Thanks for joining me. Take care.